Hi, my name is Kathy Neptune and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to share with you tips, tools, and recipes to make your time in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. So we're finishing up with our summer seasonal salads. And tonight, wait until you see what we do uh, with fresh tomatoes. And we have just a bounty this year. It's been a great year for tomatoes. And we're going to do some salad cups in a very unique way. And you're going to want to try these because they're so fun. And they're light and delicious and colorful and make a great presentation. And that's what it's all about, the wow factor. And then we're going to do one of my favorites this time of year, again, to take advantage of all the local produce. And it's a summer salad pizza. And there are so many different variations that I'll share with you as we go along. So to start out our salad cups, our tomato cups, I'm going to show you a really neat idea to make the cups. And we're starting out here with some Monterey Jack cheese. And we're going to slice it and put it into cubes. And I'm going to use one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. It's not a sharp blade, but it cuts really well. And this is a crinkle cutter. And don't forget to ask me if you have any questions on anything and see how it doesn't stick to the blade because I have some great resources for a lot of these tools and I'll be glad to share them with you. So we have a square and I'm cutting it into four little cubes like so and I'm putting it on my baking stone and I love the stoneware. Again, a great, great tool to have in your kitchen. And you see how I'm separating them because these are going to melt and you don't want them sticking together, so kind of space them out like so. And I'm going to do several different styles. What we're making here are cheese cups, and they melt out, and they look like cheese doilies or lace doilies. Another cheese that I'm going to use, because you can do this either way, and this is Monterey Jack. It's the same Monterey Jack, but it's in a shredded form. So I want to show you how versatile this recipe is. And I'm going to make it into a large round. And we're going to do something very fun with this. And you can spread it out. Of course, the larger the circle, the larger your finished product is going to be. And it's going to all melt together. And there's oil in cheese, so you don't really have to worry too much about oiling your pan because the oil in there, especially on a baking stone, will make it non-stick. Then another option that I love to use is Monterey, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Parmesan cheese, shredded Parmesan. And this, if you want to have consistent st uh, sizes, you can use a measuring cup. But we're going to do little ones, the same approximate size as the Monterey Jack cubes will be. And I have my oven preheated. You could do about 350 to 375. And it doesn't really matter. It just goes really quickly. And you want to check them after a few minutes, about eight minutes, to see you want them browning on the outside. And that should be just about right. And if you're more comfortable, you can measure, especially with the Parmesan cheese, probably a, a good hefty tablespoon will be good. So I'm going to pop this in the oven. And we're going to check that in about eight minutes to see how things are going there. So that's the beginning of our cheese doilies. And we're going to do our salad pizza. And we have our ingredients for the salad pizza here. And you want to keep an eye on our time here for the cheese doilies. Now this, I've pre-baked a crust because it is a pizza, salad pizza. You can use a um, pizza dough if you'd like. I've used crescent rolls because I think it's a little lighter and easier to um, maneuver on a pizza crust style. It holds up well. And you can prepare all the ingredients ahead of time if you'd like. Uh, and then just assemble it at the last minute. I wouldn't do this too far in advance because it might make your crust soggy. So here we have some light cream cheese. I use the Nufa shell, 
which is, as you can see on the packet, is a third less fat. Another nice option, you can use full fat cream cheese, um, low fat cream cheese, and my new favorite too, I love the yogurt cream cheese. It's very good. It's got a little bit more of a piquant flavor to it, but find out what you like. And that's what I love about these recipes that I, I share with you is that everything's so versatile. It's not written in stone and you can adapt it to your taste for you and your family. So in addition to this, I'm just going to grab some uh, mayonnaise and I wouldn't use salad dressing. I would use regular mayonnaise in this. And we're going to add to our softened cream cheese about, um, I would say, a tablespoon. And sometimes I've done this with yogurt, and it's just as good with yogurt if you'd like. Again, it gives it a nice piquant flavor. And we're going to mix that with some fresh garlic. I love fresh garlic. It makes it taste so good. If you're allergic to garlic, you can use garlic powder. I wouldn't use garlic salt, though. Garlic powder is the way to go. And we're going to press in some fresh garlic and this is according to your taste so we're going to blend that in and some fresh well really they're dried herbs but if you have fresh herbs you could certainly put whatever flavor you want i'm using italian seasoning and depending on what type of salad and that's probably a teaspoon there's so many different variations and we're going to put a, an kind of like a Mediterranean type of salad topping on here. Think about what flavors you'd want. Let's say if you wanted to do, let's say a Mexican salad pizza. This is where it gets fun because you can put Mexican seasoning in here, or taco seasoning, or chili seasoning in with your cream cheese. And then think about the different toppings you'd put on there. You could put, of course, your basic salad mixture and black beans and avocado and onions and tomatoes. And let's say you want to do, uh, let's see, an Asian salad. Then you put an Asian seasoning on here in with your cream cheese and you do uh, maybe some shredded Napa cabbage and some water chestnuts, uh, green onions, um, just whatever you think you'd like that would go along with that theme. And it's so fun to mix it up. Sometimes I just, I do a BLT one. I do a blue cheese uh, mixture in here. And then I'll do little shreds of steak on top. And it's really endless as to what you could do for your salad pizzas. So I'm spreading the cream cheese and garlic mixture on top. You can see that the crust broke in bits but that's okay we're going to slice it anyway we'll do that spread it right to the edges i think my favorite one of these is the mexican one it's so colorful and it's so pretty and it's really a meal in itself so that's all there is it doesn't have to be fussy because you're going to cover it up anyway so we have that i'm going to put this over here and then, let me check real quick on my cheese doilies, because we got those going. <gasps> those look really good. Why am I always surprised when something comes out good? Then we're going to add our topping on here. I'm going to take a bowl. And it's a basic salad mix. I like these mixed greens. And again, you want to do this at the last minute. And before we top the pizza, here's a little tip for you. Cut your pizza first, because it's easier to slice it in pieces. You can hear how crispy it is. I like it crispy because it holds up better to the salad topping. And you can do it, of course, in a round, on a round pizza stone, and it look like a real pizza. But um, it's just whatever you prefer. There's nothing really written in stone about it. And then on here, I'm going to take some cherry tomatoes for color. They're so good this year. For anybody who has a tomato garden, I'll tell you, it's I love the heirloom tomatoes. I use um, 
there's some orange ones and some yellow ones and there's something called chocolate sprinkles which is a fun name for um, tomatoes but they're dark chocolate and it's funny with the um we, uh, I grew one year I grew green tomatoes and it was tricky because I didn't know when they were ripe it's just one of those things so they kind of went a little wild before I figured it out but that's okay back to tomato school for me and now I'm going to slice um gee I should have a tool for this right I guess I don't just use a knife and keep your knuckles bent under because there's no knuckles in here in this recipe so you want to stay safe and again, I like the crunch of the radishes, and they're good for you, too. And sometimes I put in cucumbers, but I, I just like, I like the radishes in here. And you can add carrots. What else? Oh, I like green onions in there, so we're going to do. Now, remember, I have a trash barrel there. I'm not throwing everything on the floor. So thank you for everybody who asks about that. And I guess these are scallions. I don't know the difference between green onions and scallions. You know what I'm going to make one night for you? One, on one show, I'm going to do appetizers. And this time of year, I make my homemade borsan cheese. And I'll tell you, it's, it's really good. If it wasn't me, I'd be impressed because everybody loves it. And I bring it with me. Uh, wherever I go, people ask me for this recipe, and it's so easy, and it has green onions and garlic and Dijon. Really killer. So we're going to do that. And Terry wanted feta cheese. Terry gets feta cheese. And then we're going to do the black olives. Should we leave them whole? Yeah, we'll leave them whole. So we know that they're olives. And then I'm back over here checking on the cheese. So excuse my back. Yeah, they're looking good. So in here, I'm going to toss, I love the Robusto Italian dressing. It just has a lot of flavor. And at the last minute, but look at how colorful that is. Isn't that pretty? And that's going to go on top of the pizza. And we're just going to dress it lightly. Not too much. I'm going to get my spoons over here. And toss this and we're going to put it on top of our salad pizza. I'll tell you, this is going to be a really light, light meal for everybody. They're, when your family comes in and they're out playing all day or you've been on the road all day and you want something light and healthy, man, this is good. This would be a great barbecue recipe too. And there's nothing that says you can't do marinated chicken on the top or... I love Asian shrimp. Marinate Asian shrimp and put it on the top of this. It's just really, really good. And you can see why there's an advantage to slicing the dough first. Then you don't have to worry about cutting through all this. And it doesn't destroy the look that we're trying to achieve. You know, this, this is so good. I might charge people when I bring this for Labor Day. I may have to leave a sign and have them contribute because it's so so good so that's our Italian salad pizza wow I'm gonna use every bit of it and you know a little goes a long way so you could take whatever you have on hand how about a broccoli and lemon and garlic salad it would be good too. get creative and make your own and give it a name and there's our Italian salad pizza. I'm going to get my little cheese doilies. They're just about ready. I'm going to get them out of the oven. And when we come back, wait until you see this. We'll be right back. We're doing our tomato cups. And I've done several of them here ahead of time. So they had a chance to cool. But these are the ones. Remember the cheese that we put into the oven? These little cheese cubes? Now you want to work quickly and carefully because they're very very hot and this is what happens when I told you don't put them too close because they do kind of melt together but what we're going to do is take these and again be very careful because they're very hot and I have a tool that came with this little mini muffin pan 
and it presses the cheese into the bottom and forms these little cups. So you just move along and press them carefully because they're still pliable. You want to do these while they're hot. But a good tip, if they get to be really firm like these, you can see how firm these are when they cool. You can put this whole tray back into the oven for just a few minutes and they soften up again. So that's a good tip to know. And then you can see how it's still soft like so. And then you just press it down into the middle and it forms a little cup. Now this one is going to give me a hard time. But you can see they're starting to form. And you can see it's still pliable. And you press it down. Now if you don't have a little tart shaper, and remember you can always email me for these recipes and the tools. I'd be glad to give you the resources. But say if you don't have this tart shaper that you can get for the mini muffin pan, you can use something with a round handle like this or the top of the salad dressing jar that we used, wash it real well or put it inside a plastic baggie and tip it upside down and you can use that to form these as well. As long as it fits inside the mini muffin pan, you're good to go. So how fun is this? Like I said, my mother said, don't play with your food. Well, guess what? Now, this is me out of control because I think these are adorable. And when they're cool, look at this. Now, let's say you don't want to go through all this trouble. Here's something else you could do. These are, remember the Parmesan cheese? And it was shredded. Look at how lacy these come out. And you can leave them just like this. We're going to put them on a platter. And they cool down. And you can use them like crackers if you're doing wine and cheese. They're great for crackers. And then we have a bigger one here. Of course, this is spinning all around and it's very, very hot. So I don't want to touch the stone. And you see, it loosens right up. And this is fun. I'm going to show you this. I went to cheese school and I'll tell you, I need a life. I love cheese. So I'm going to take something like this. Spread it over there, and let's hope this works, because this cheese is still pliable, and you drape it over the top like so, and let it set there and cool, and you're going to have a cheese taco, and you put your salad filling in there. Now, that I would definitely charge people for, because I think that's pretty cool, and it's fun, and it's light, and you're going to be the talk of the tree, and that's what it's all about. I would definitely do these as a summer item for the Labor Day or for 4th of July, or any barbecue you go to, this is fun. But again, do all these uh, ahead of time, and transport them right in here if you'd like, and then do your filling uh, when you get there. So I'm going to remove this, because it's hot, and I'll probably end up burning myself on it. These are very, very hot. But if you don't have a baking stone, you've got to write to me. Email me. And let me know, the stones are amazing, just amazing. So in the bowl here, this is what we're going to use to fill our little tomato cups. And they're little diced uh, cherry tomatoes. And I wish I had uh, some of the different colored ones, because these are magnificent when you use all the different colored cherry tomatoes in here. And I'm going to drain most of the try and get most of the juice from here. You don't want to load it up too much. So I'm using a slotted spoon and we're filling those. And you can add other things to this if you want to make different fillings. Um, the little flat crisp that I used, you saw me just leave them flat on the dish. I put on there, I spread out guacamole, top it with a little bit of salsa and sour cream and you have a little Mexican, um, like cheese crisps. They call, I think they call them fricos. And you can certainly do that in these, too, with guacamole and a little bit of salsa on the top. It doesn't take much. And then top it with sour cream, even cilantro if you have it, or a little parsley just for a little bit of green. 
And if you wanted to do a bigger, say a full size salad, I've done these in a regular muffin tin. And then you have a beautiful cheese bowl to make your tossed salad in and you serve that as an entree to your dinner. And I'll tell you, it is spectacular. It looks so pretty and so festive and so colorful. You gotta try this. You know what these cheese doilies, I call them, or cheese cups, you know what they taste like? When you have a grilled cheese sandwich and a little piece of the cheese sneaks out of the side and gets on top of the grill and gets brown and crispy, that's what these are like. And they're just one bite, one, two bite servings and I'm going to a barbecue this week and I get invited to a lot of barbecues. I don't think because they like me, but because they know I'm going to bring something good. So I'm bringing this because everybody's trying to eat light and healthy. And this certainly fits the bill. Now I have some fresh basil from my garden. And you can put little bits on the top for color. You could also mix it right into the salad if you want. But I like to put them on top. Just so they, you know, you can see them. And it smells, it smells like summer. It really and truly does. And this is something you could do ahead of time and transport it. I mean, how cool is that? And if somebody doesn't like basil, you don't have to put basil or basil, however you say it. It's just good eats. That looks pretty nice. And then look at how they lift right out. Now these are the ones we just made. I'm going to put them over on my platter. And they don't, you know, they're not all perfect, but they certainly do have a nice presentation. And get pretty dishes. Always serve and pre I love dishes. I, I go and it's like Disneyland for me when I go to a store and they have all different dishes. It's so sad, but I just, I just love dishes. It's like the jewelry for your kitchen. Makes everything look festive. And then for our tool time, I did want to talk a little bit about our mini muffin pan while I have it here, which is this little baby here. And I use it, of course, for muffins. I use it for little cakes. But I'll tell you what else I use it for. And um, you can see the juice that comes out of your tomatoes. That's why you want to drain them really well and do them at the last minute. But this mini muffin pan, uh, I take meatballs and I season them with like Mexican seasoning, form them into a ball, and I use a scoop so they're consistent. And then I put them in the muffin pans and I take this and press it down, the meatball, press it down and it makes a little meat shell. And then I bake it in the oven and when it comes out, I fill it with salsa and cheese and sour cream. Or you can do mini ones out of turkey meatballs. And then you can do a center filling with a little bit of stuffing, a little bit of gravy over the top and have little bites like that. You can do go the sweet route and do brownies and I press in a peanut butter cup inside the brownie killer and you can also do little cupcakes you bake them and I always use a scoop because they're very consistent when you scoop them and put them in the mini muffin pan they all come out even and then while they're still warm I take this and press it down in the center again on your cupcake and let them cool and then you fill them with the same little scoop of ice cream on the top. They are killer. And with these new nonstick pans, you don't have to worry about muffin papers and muffin cups. They go right into the pan, which is really, really nice. And of course, you can make plain old mini cupcakes, but you're going to have so much fun with these because they're so versatile and they're so fun to use. Um, let's see how our taco, a cheese taco came out. And you can make them small or large, but look at how fun that is. And fill that with a wonderful salad. Here are our little cheese crisps. And again, put guacamole and sour cream and salsa on that and serve them as an appetizer. Or for your wine and cheese party, they're so elegant. And people say, oh, Kathy, these are so good, these cheese crisps. How did you make them? And I say, you know, it's really complicated, so I can't tell you, but you know the secret now. 
They're fun, they're fast, and they're fabulous. So I hope you enjoyed all these little tips and ideas. Look at our colorful display here of our uh, salad, our tomato cups. Here is our beautiful, beautiful salad pizza. And I would serve that with a wonderful lemonade, maybe some meat skewers, um, shrimp. You've got a whole meal right from the garden. So thank you to everybody, too, who writes in with your tips and ideas and wonderful, wonderful comments. Please feel free to write in or email me with your question, and I'll be happy to address it and answer it on the air. Thank you again for watching. I hope you try these fabulous recipes with your family and friends. Thank you for watching, and may the fork be with you.